Good afternoon, book lovers. Robert Boyd coming at you with another book report. Today I'm talking about this book. Um, I'm going to hold it on this side. Uh, it's called uh, My Boy, and it's by uh, Belgian cartoonist Olivia Schwann. Um, he's Belgian, but he lives in Berlin. Uh, he was born in 1977, so from my point of view, he's a young guy, but really, 77 is, is fully adult, and I actually have a bunch of his books that uh, have been published in English. His publishers in English have been Breeze, who published this one, and Breeze is a, a Belgian publisher, a small press publisher, that does um, very artsy kind of comics. In other words, the kind I like, and s about half of them are in Flemish, and the other half are in English. And he also did these um, these mini comics, uh, thirty thousand years of bad luck, and uh, twenty nine thousand years of bad luck. Uh, This book, uh, Portrait of a Drunk, came out uh, this year, or last year, I should say, and is it's a collaboration between Schwann and uh, French cartoonists uh, uh, Rupert and Mulot. And um, honestly, it looks it just looks like Schwann to me, but they uh, they put their their um, their styles together well. Uh, I think this was the first one I got. The man who grew his beard, and um, this one, uh, Arsène Schwann, is a, a fictional biography of his his grandfather. Um. Anyway, he's he's a obviously he's an artist that uh, I think I should know more about, but I don't really know that much about him except for the fact that he was born in '77 from. Belgium, but now lives in uh, Berlin. Uh, there's a, a I found a good interview with him online, um, but I would actually be interested in knowing more. And this book, My Boy, came out in uh, at least th this edition of it came out in 2014. But I suspect that bits of it were um, were published uh, in um, in comics magazines because they're all short stories. Uh, anyway, it starts off with the violent birth of Boy. He, he, the characters don't have names, and he's always referred to as my boy by his father. Uh, the doctor who's trying to get him out of his mother ends up killing the mother by mistake, and the boy is born when uh, they take the mother's body to the cemetery to be buried. Uh, and the father is, of course, alarmed by this, but, uh, and that, that section is wordless. Um, then in, in chapter one, called My Boy Talks, uh, the father, who now has white hair, even though I, it doesn't appear to be old, but I think uh, the implication is that the sight of him being born out of the corpse of his mother turned his hair white. Um, so. The father takes boy out and he shows him architecture and and teaches him to say that architecture is the mother of all arts or something like that then uh, takes him golfing and teaches him to say hole in one and then he, he goes to visit some friends and he sh he's showing boy off to his friends and has boy say these phrases that he's taught him and uh, the one thing I I want to point out about these uh, friends is that um is that uh, the way the way uh, Schwann's drawn them is um, gives it a feeling to me of a uh, really early comic strips uh, uh, on the American side maybe uh, like Windsor McKay but really even earlier than that the sort of uh, European comic strips of the 19th century and uh, it has this kind of antique look although the subject matter is not antique but We'll get to that. The second chapter um, is called uh, Bruges Horror, in other words, Brussels Horror. And um, 
father takes a boy out on a cold day and uh, the boy has sneezes and the sneezes are explosive and end up you know causing general disgusting mayhem including uh, killing a horse and uh, and uh, knocking over a um, a lace maker uh, his two needles end up going into the eyes of a uh, of someone who's standing uh, a bystander and, and this whole thing this whole thing of uh, sneezes being so powerful that it caused a massive amount of destruction actually refers to an early American comic strip by Windsor McKay. And Windsor McKay is the guy who did uh, Little Nemo in Slumberland but he actually act did a whole bunch of other stuff as well and one strip he did was called uh, Little Sammy Sneeze and in it uh, in each uh, strip, Snee Sammy builds up to a sneeze that causes massive destruction. So it's 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 kind of juvenile, uh, but that was what sold newspapers. And Winsor McKay was a freaking great artist and uh, a good artist for uh, Olivia Schwann to uh, emulate. Um, on this trip, on this field trip with a uh, with my boy, um, he takes him to a. Um, a uh, art museum in Brussels that's showing up uh, Flemish primitives, which is uh, an old-fashioned term for uh, for Flemish Renaissance painters, and and these would be painters that you've heard of, like um, Jan van Eyck, uh, Roger van der Weyden, um, Hieronymus Bosch, and so on. And uh, the paintings that they uh, and I, I have no idea if the paintings that uh, Schwann's drawing here are actually based on real paintings, but they look like they could be by um, by one of these early Northern Renaissance painters. Then um, uh, the next chapter is called "My Boy Is Not a Puppet," and it has it has an interesting parallel structure. The man, the father, is going out on a date. After all, he's single. His his wife died, giving birth to my boy. And um, he leaves a babysitter to look after my boy. And uh, there's a, I, the page I'm going to show you now has this um, parallel structure where uh, the father is uh, talking to his date at, about what he's done. And it's super boring and mundane. And then uh, it switches to uh, the babysitter who's... who's watching my boy and she's he's she's commenting boy you are boring and this kind of parallel structures is relatively easy to do in comics and I think it's a uh, I mean it's easy to do in comics just like it's easy to do in filmmaking but when I was looking at it it made me think of a uh, classical music because I've just been listening to a bunch today uh, where uh, a composer has a, a theme or if not a whole theme motif, he has uh, some instruments uh, expressing that theme in one way, and then a different group of instruments expressing it in a slightly different way, kind of in parallel, kind of like they're in conversation with one another, except it's the same story, or in this case, the same theme. And uh, anyway, I, I, that might be a, a metaphor too far to, to really be believable, but it feels right to me. Um, the man, in the meantime, really wants to uh, to make out with the woman, but she is not interested in him. And it's, it's, there's a, a great page where they go up to a balcony to get out of the rain, and the man thinks, "All right, I'm gonna get some," but uh, she instead she comes close to him and unties his tie and reties it because he couldn't tie it at the beginning. Um, before the date, so he had it tied wrong. So, eh, eh. okay. The next chapter is 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 the most insane. It's uh, called at the Antwerp Zoo, and and uh, I believe um, I believe Schwan is from Antwerp originally. So, uh, father takes my boy to the zoo, and my boy accidentally falls into the alligator pit where he is almost immediately swallowed by the alligator 
Um, and he's in the alligator's stomach, and uh, in in the stomach he finds he meets a pygmy, and uh, of course we know uh, pygmies um, are are basically uh, several ethnicities in in Congo. They just don't grow very tall. They're in their four feet. You know, most of them are under five feet. But in this case, the pygmy is just like a man, like this tall, just a few inches tall, and. Uh, he helps the pygmy escape uh, the uh, the alligator, and uh, the pygmy takes them back to uh, where the pygmies are in the zoo. And this is kind of kind of a uh, disturbing that the pygmies are in a zoo, and he, he uh, they all they for some reason once this guy's come back from his cage, and basically he's he's he was able to escape because there's a small hole in the fence around. The pygmy section. Uh, he convinces his fellow pygmies, and there's a ton of them, uh, that they should uh, they should all escape. And um, they uh, they they escape, and they they let their animal friends uh, out, so the animals all escape, and they kill a bunch of zookeepers and a bunch of bystanders with little tiny spears. Um, it makes made me think a little bit of uh, that uh, famous uh, Karen Black uh, short in uh, the Trilogy of Terror, where the the little Zuni doll attacks her. Um, but one thing, when 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 the the going gets tough, like when the cops are coming and they got guns, the pygmies combine into a, like a, and I'm showing you the page so you can see it, into like a a composite man, two composite men, and they fight the cops. And my boy manages to escape and is reunited with his father. So, it's kind of disturbing. Pygmies in a zoo, and yet it happened. And not just in, um, in Belgium, but really all over the world. And infamously in the United States at the, um, at the Bronx Zoo, there was a pygmy who was a uh, Brought back from Africa by a from Congo by a, a missionary, who bought him from a, a slaver apparently. Uh, at the end of uh, the 19th century, um, or beginning of the 20th century, I, uh, I'm not sure. Named Otabenga, and Otabenga was first shown at uh, the World's Fair, and then at the Bronx Zoo, and his case became a cross celeb amongst uh, African Americans. And uh, finally, they uh, decided to to let him go and to send him home. But by the time they uh, were going to send him home, uh, World War One had begun, and it was too dangerous to uh, send people overseas. And um, Onabanga was uh, so crushed by the fact that he wasn't going to be able to go home, he committed suicide. So, a horrible story from racist America in the past that uh, Olivia Swan. Uh, uses to great effect. Um, and finally, the last story is called uh, My, My Boy Grows Up. And um, in it, uh, the father, the boy, you know, grows seemingly overnight to uh, adult size and becomes old and dies. And the father is deeply troubled by this, but it turns out it was all a dream. This book was uh, is incredibly amusing and, uh, and, and witty. It has, it has kind of a matter-of-fact um, dialogue, and it was translated by two old friends of mine, actually, Mark Nevins and Matt Madden. Um, and I don't know how close it is to the original, but I suspect probably pretty close, because that's one thing that uh, Schwann likes to do, is have these sort of have these kind of surreal, I, I, I hate to use the word surreal because he doesn't use the word surreal, kind of absurd adventures, but have them told in a kind of down-to-earth matter-of-fact as if, hey, this everything's normal. So I think I think they probably are pretty, um, pretty faithful, at least in tone. And the tone is what makes it. And Schwann's amazing art. He's, he's a great artist, and uh, he recalls his early uh, 19th and early 20th century comic artist really well with this book. Anyway, I highly recommend My Boy, as I said, published by Breeze. I'm not really sure if you can 
get it in the U.S. But uh, from like a bookstore. But I ordered it from Domino Books, and I'll, I'll put a link to Domino Books uh, in uh, in my blog post. Anyway, thanks very much, and have a good day.